In this Roblox Studio scripting tutorial, I am showing you a simple way to add data store to our tapping simulator game. This will save our player data, such as rebirths and taps. Continuing on from the last video, let's open up our stats script. Before we get into that, I want to clean up a couple of things. We have the file here called player data, which was the previous code we used to save data. It was a bit confusing. So let's just delete this file. In this video today we are rewriting the code for saving and loading. This will make the script much easier to understand, and also more efficient. Let's get started. Open up the stats script. I am going to add some code in here to save and load data, for our taps and rebirths. On line 2. Start by renaming tap store to player data store. And as shown. Rename taps to player data store. Scroll down and make these changes. On line 34 and 35, change menu to taps. This just helps us know what this is. Menu really wasn't describing this well. Scroll down a bit more. And notice what I do. Just highlight this block of code and delete it. We are going to write some new code here. Make some room here like this. We will come back to this in a second. First, let's write a new function just above the player added connect function. Write out this code as shown. This will be our code to save player data. In this case, I am actually saving a table. Which is great for your game, because it only uses one async call. First I inserted the taps value, from leader stats. And next, insert the rebirths value from leader stats. Then as usual, with a data store set async. We need to wrap this code inside a pcall function like this. Ok, perfect. That's our save function completed. Now, we need to call this save function when the player is removed from the game. And also I'll add an autosave function that will save the data every 60 seconds. Just under the player added function, make some space here. And add this code like this. This will be the player removing function, which is automatically called for us when the player leaves the game. Here, we just need to call the save player data function, that we just created. The next function needs to be inside the player added function, which is just here. Write out this code which will call the save player data function for us every 60 seconds. Okay, that's done. The next function is called a bind to close function, which will save the data if the player is the last player in the server. It's just a few lines. Write this bind to close function in here like this. Ok, that's saving completed. That will save the player data. But the player won't load into the game with saved data yet. We need to get the data from data stores when the player joins the game. Let's do that now. Up here, inside the player added function, write out this code for loading the player data. This will complete all the scripting, so we can test if it works in a second. Since we saved the data as a table to data stores, we have to remember which number in the table holds which value. In this case, we set taps as the first value and rebirths as the second. So when I load them, I am using the numbers 1 and 2 to get the correct value. Ok, time for a run to test this. If you have this error like I do, it's because we deleted that player data script at the start of the video. The error is saying line 3 of the start script. I am just going to delete this start script as well. We don't need that now since we just rewrote our saving code. Just right click the script we called start script and delete it. Or comment that script out if you are unsure. Let's run it again to test. I've got a problem here because while I was creating this video, I set my rebirths to zero. Let me show you how to quickly fix this. You might not have this problem. But, it's a good idea to add this, just to make sure. Because if rebirths are zero, then we are multiplying by zero. That's going to always give us zero. So we don't want that. In the stat script, add this line of code just after we load the data. That should fix it, let's try to run it now. Ok, I have one rebirth as you can see, let's do some taps and rebirths to test this. That looks ok. So, now I'm going to stop the game, then reload it, to see if it saves and reloads the data. 
Leader stats looks okay, it has loaded the data correctly there. But, on the left. It's not loading here. Okay, we have one more line to add to fix this and we are done. Back in the stats script. Add this line in the places shown, which is where we loaded the player data. Let's check it. No. We have this not a valid member error. Okay, let's see what we did. The problem here is that this line of code is run before the tap GUI has loaded. To fix this we can just add a wait for child like this. Then the script will wait for the tap GUI to load, and not throw an error. Okay, should be fine now. Let's check it. Yes. It has worked great. You can see that the left GUI has loaded the correct amount of taps. And the leader stats is also loaded with the correct amount of taps and rebirths. Okay, let me show you the final stats script right now, so you can copy from here if it's not working for you. Okay, let's run it one more time. And yes it loaded correctly with the values updated for both taps and rebirths. In the next video, I'll fix these large numbers up and show you the script for that. This will make it so that 1000 reads is 1k etc. If you are having trouble saving and loading data from Studio, please check you have API services enabled for Studio. Open up game settings and go to the security tab to toggle this on. That's the end of this Roblox tutorial. You should have your rebirths and tap saving and loading now. This is the god of coding at Epic Blocks Dev signing off, see you in the next one.